Hallelujah. And Father, we thank you for your goodness. Lord, we thank you for your kindness. Lord, we thank you because of your faithfulness. Once again, we're gathered to celebrate your love. We we'll thank you for what you've done and what you're doing. We we'll thank you for power in the name of Jesus. We we'll thank you for the finished work of Calvary. We, in the name of the Lord Jesus, we're praying as we delve into your word, speak to every heart. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. That amen needs some help. In Jesus' name we pray. Praise God. Isaiah chapter 60 in verse 1. So this morning, I'm talking about watchmen and gatekeepers i'm talking about watchmen and gatekeepers now you must understand something that when we use men in the bible it's not talking about the male gender it's talking about both of male and female what men watchmen and what we call it and gatekeepers let me ask a question here what frustrates you about this world right now is it something that frustrates your spirit about this world right now where's my microphone where's my microphone what frustrates you what frustrates your spirit about the water anybody want to say something did you did you get yeah, yeah let's go yeah what frustrates your spirit about the world right now yeah uh good morning judge i think the issue of um the shall i say gay and lesbian movements and you know transgender so much so now that we see it in everything we can't watch a movie without seeing you know, male on male action as opposed to heterosexual, you know, engagement. Um, I think I was in London the other day and the entirety of, oh, actually, we were there for July, um, for NLP London. Yeah. And the entire. It was a Pride, it was Pride Week. Pride Week. And I'm saying to myself, why is the church not having a Pride Week? And everybody in corporate UK was out there celebrating and it was a big party. So much so that if you are an unbeliever, you'd literally be like, wow, this is a cool party, I should join. I, I need to really praise the movement, the fact that they are very evangelistic. <laughs> yeah, they are very evangelistic. They, they are more evangelistic than we evangelicals. Praise the Lord. Hello. What else is frustrating? Any other person here? Something else is frustrating you? There's a guy at the back. There's a guy at the back. There's a guy just behind you. Okay. Yeah. What else is frustrating you? you feel, spiritually. Spiritually, yeah spiritually um comfortability in decadence right people feel very comfortable in not doing things the scriptural way and they find a way to back that up and also defend it that if you're having conversations with them it seems like this is actually making sense if you're not rooted in the word and it's very easy for you to sway so comfortable. there's a lot of secularism in the world right yes, now exactly yes there's a lot of secularism in the world right now that that's fantastic can i get one more something that's frustrating your spirit something that it's burning in your spirit there's, there's a lady over there that wants to say something i hope that it's burning within your spirit i hope it's burning within your spirit yeah i think it would be teenage pregnancy teenage pregnancy do you have the statistics for that i don't have but like around me i see a lot of very young girls being exposed to sexual activities very early you know i, I don't know if what the viral video that went online about this young girl that the call, the, the the parents actually called the police to come and do her and she's literally about 18 years old but she's dating the man that's about 68 years old and she was like you can do you know and, and the thing is this this is the world we live in let's go to isaiah chapter 6 verse 1. isaiah chapter 6 verse 1 because what does the bible say about all of this isaiah chapter 60 verse 1. the bible says this arise and shine for the light has come and the glory of the lord is in upon thee verse 2 he said for behold darkness i wanted to see darkness means evil means decadent he said darkness shall cover he didn't say shall cover some shall cover all the nations of the earth so we are not surprised that as we come to the end of time that darkness is covering what the nations of the earth look at what it says he said darkness shall cover the earth then it goes further and says when you think you've seen it all then gross darkness gross darkness means did you do mathematics gross means what multiplied maximum optimized he said gross that he said darkness will cover the earth he said but gross darkness will cover the people then he puts a bot he said but the lord will arise upon thee and his glory shall be seen on thee meaning this and this is very powerful as darkness is traveling god will raise up people that are glory dispensers 
Oh, glory to God. I, I don't know if I'm talking the right way. Maybe they're over here. As darkness is covering the earth, God, I, I don't know if, if you're here because if you're here, you'll be shouting. God will raise up people that are glory dispensers. If you're amongst them, say, I'm here. Yeah. You must always remember this. All evil needs to succeed is for good to keep quiet. All evil needs to succeed is for good to keep quiet. All we all 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 it needs for teenage pregnancy to keep rising is for good people to keep quiet. All we need is for suicide to keep rising, is for solutions to keep quiet. All we need for racism and tribalism to keep driving is for good people to keep quiet. But the moment we will begin to speak, all will happen, they will begin to shake, tremble, their kingdoms will begin to become collapsed. Glory to God. And that's why this morning we're talking about watchmen. Because it's good to be a Christian, but you're called to be a watchman. Watchmen and gatekeepers. Isaiah chapter 62. Just two chapters after the first one we read. Verse 6. One of the things you must realize is that every time God wants to bring a change, he doesn't look for a committee or a group of people. He looks for one person. I know I said Isaiah chapter 62, but let me just backtrack a little. Maybe let's go to Ezekiel chapter 22 verse 30. Ezekiel chapter 22. Every time God wants to bring a change, when God thinks of the teenage problem and God wants to bring a change, he looks for one person. The other day I was speaking to my friend and we were just, you know, we were just, you know, someone offered us like a brownie and he looked at me and he said, I hope there's no weed in the brownie. I said, why would there be weed in the brownie? He said, it's a normal thing that people now put weed in brownie. I said, I said, has weed become so common? And you know why you're not talking? Because you know it's true. And some of you have been eating it before. And sometimes I will come across sophisticated, classy, lovely girls, you know, and guys, and some guys, and they're wearing this tie and have six pack and have this lovely career. And they'll say, I'm struggling. I'm saying, uh, it's, it's weed. I'm like, I'm like, well, I'm pretty you. I said, Oh, weed is my go to place. I'm like, It's your go to place. I said, How did you deal with your breakup? Weed. When you lost money, weed. When you lost your uncle, weed. And there's this growing addiction, and all that darkness needs to prevail is for light to keep quiet. There's a new wave of modern occultism. Gradually, Buddhism is on the rise. You see, Christians, you know, they don't go and see a man in the hut in the village that wears white cap right now. You know what they do? Because Babalaos have transformed. They are now called forensic people, people that can see the future. So instead of giving you all those things we change, they give you a handband and says, this for doing for have good luck. How do we have a charm? Listen, a charm is a charm. Yes, sir. And they are Christians. Where is our God? Christians are asking, where is the God of Elijah? And God is saying, where are the Elijahs of the living God? Are the likeness of God people that will stand and say, If nobody will stand, I will stand. If nobody will stand, I will stand and call down fire. It's so bad that everybody seems to love porn now. You know, even the way you, you know, if you're not doing porn, like, ah, you don't know porn. <laughs> ah, you mean you're a virgin. Because darkness has covered the earth and gross darkness the people in fact this generation is, is redefining what sin is the only problem they have is that they, don't, they can't write the Bible so when you date <laughs> I was telling someone that um, one of our pastors was dating I'm like you know they're dating of course it's celibate and the lady said Pastor forget. I always celebrate when they did. It's what they did for. 
And I said, and this person saying this is a genuine Christian older woman. And I said, my God, have we become so influenced? You know, it gets really bad when salt that is meant to influence has been influenced. We are the salt of the earth. Have you not seen people that when they get to certain environment, when they say pray, they can't speak in tongues? And the reason why is that they want to be compliant. They want to be politically correct. Listen to me. If my, if my faith offends you, I'm sorry. I respect what you do, but respect my faith. Glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. We didn't follow religion, we follow the person. We didn't follow him, Matthias, we followed Jesus. With the whole of our heart and our soul and our spirit. See what Ezekiel said, Ezekiel chapter, chapter 30, 22 verse 30. Are you there? This is the word of the Lord. God says, every time I want to bring about a change, a transformation, he said, I don't seek for a team. I don't look for, I don't look for a committee. I don't look for a group of people. I seek for a man. It's, God is always looking for a man. That man is a watchman. He said, I seek for a man. Who is the man that should make up the gap? The two of you come here. Chuma, come here. So one of you guys come here. And, and this and another person come and join. Another person come and join. And this is one got one, a third person, a third person. You know, third person come and join. Oh, I'm not kind of quiet. Maybe, maybe lady. You know, come, 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 come. I'm not gonna come quickly. Come, just just stand stand over here. He says, God says this. Come over here, stand over here. God says, I'm I'm seeking for him. This is man. This is God. God says, he's so far, I can't reach him. I'm looking for someone from amongst them that can step out from them. That if I can reach her, she can reach him. That's what God is looking for. God, God is saying a man is so far that he seems to be out of reach. But if someone can stand from amongst them and stand in the gap, so much so that if I can touch him, I can touch them. You must always remember that your, your hands are the extension of his hands. Yes. No wonder he says we shall lay hands upon the sick yes. and they shall recover. The reason why is that there's something about our touch that when we touch them, boom, power flows from us into them. Because our hands is the extension of his hands. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm not ordinary, I'm a solution. So the Bible says in the book of Ezekiel, he said, I sought for a man. He says, I, he, says he didn't say I'm looking for a pastor. He didn't say I'm looking for an older person. He says, I'm looking. You know why I chose this lady? Because she looks so fragile. She looks as if she's breakable. But if she can step out and say, Lord, use me. Just by the fact that she looks fragile, the power and the anointing of God will rest upon our spirits. God says, I sought for a man amongst them that should make up the edge. He says, I'm looking for someone that can stand in the gap between me for the Lord. He said, the problem is this. I'm looking for someone and I found none. He says, God says, I'm looking. I found none. Thank you. Can I... Can we go deeper right now? God is looking for people to you to reach ladies. Can they find you? No, no, no. He can't because all the time you are busy with TikTok. All the time you are busy with YouTube. Netflix is where you go to. Netflix, Netflix has found you, but God hasn't found you. You have an account with heaven, but you don't have an account with heaven. You have an account with Netflix, but you don't have an account with the kingdom of service of our God. He says, I'm looking for a man. We're talking about teenage pregnancy. We can complain to tomorrow, but complaining doesn't change anything. God says, I'm looking for a man. The question is, here am I? Send me. You walk in UBA, you walk in Senate, you walk in, you walk in Exxon Mobile, you walk somewhere. And God is saying, I'm looking for someone. You thought you got a job. You didn't get a job, you were on divine assignment. 
Oh my God. Oh my tapo raba ke baraba na mo ke brade de ka pato ka baya do ka taya. Somebody say send me. That's so weak. Somebody say send me. Joseph, Joseph, when Joseph got to Egypt, his brother says, don't kill us. He said, you don't understand how this works. It was not you that brought me here. I was sent on a divine mission. Anywhere you find yourself, it was not job that took you there. It was not visa that took you there. It was God that sent you there because there are people that God wants to reach. I hope that you can get your attention. There are people that God wants to reach. That's a reason why you went to that school. That's a reason why you walk there. That's a reason why you school there. That's a reason why you do business with them because God wants to reach them. And this is, listen everybody, the reason why most business people come under attack is this. Should I tell you why? Because you were sent for a divine purpose. The business was the excuse for which God sent you. Once you forget your purpose, your business become open to attacks. So, you got a job in Shell. You got a job in UBA. He got a job in British Airways, Zen in the bank. And it's, <laughs> listen to me, you thought that you got a job. And God says, do you know this job is an assignment? Because you must understand that you're a missionary Christian. Anywhere I go, there's a mission. I'm not a child of accident. I'm a child of divine arrangements. In fact, for you to be hearing this is because of divine arrangements. And so, when I get into the company, when I move into the new estate, Nikon estate, I go into Betua estate, I go into Lekki estate, it's not accommodation that sent me there. It's because there are some souls, there are some persons, there are some persons that God wants to touch, that he sent me there. The accommodation was the way to transform me. The visa was which to relocate me. But the truth is this, God sent me there. And sometimes we actually forget that God sent us there. It, it happens in the Bible. It happened to this lady, Esther. When trouble arose, Esther to Mordecai, I'm so sorry, I can't help you. Then Mordecai reminded her, like I'm reminding you today. He said, who knows if this is the reason why you were made a king in the first place, then our understanding opened. The same thing with David. When David approached the wall and he began to ask questions, his brother looked at him and said, you are so naughty. You always want to know everything. And David said, excuse me, sir. Is there not a reason? Is there not a cause? Is there not a reason why you are hearing this today? Is there not a reason why your heart is pounding and your soul and she pounding? The problem is that the, the church lost to the church, but we are called to make a difference. And God says, I'm seeking for a man. God says, I'm seeking for a man. God says, I'm seeking for a woman. When I hear the staggering statistics about sex trafficking, how women are shipped from Africa and shipped all over the world, God says, I'm seeking for someone that will bring about a change. When I see the addictions across nicotine, across marijuana, and God said, I'm looking for someone that will go back there and deliver them. God says, when I'm seeing people that suffer from depression and the suffer from suicide, God says, I'm looking for someone that was sent back there. You just heard about the rise in teenage pregnancy. God says, is it you? Is it you? I'm going to send. When you hear about the rise in occultism, it's so bad that even born again Christians now patronize occultism. They have a good way to put it. You know what born again say when they protest occultic people? They say, as far as you're not doing something against somebody else, that God is not angry with you. All power belongs to God. Satan does not assist God in any way. If you contact demons, you contact demons. Fat is not the power of God. And all of a sudden, your mother brings this thing from mom in the village. I said, take your part with it because you won't have a child. He should have been to look your mother in the face and said, mommy, let me even go to the extreme. If God can't do it, let it be undone. Yeah. 
we are not here for what we get we are here to follow when we when we came to christ we came to follow we came to our life everything is in it you just be washing your hair so that you can get married you be, you be washing my hair with something that came from a river who do you think i serve meanwhile i'm seated far above principalities and powers how can i be subject against to the rudimental things of this world are you here yes, you know when i got born again there were old songs that old songs of conviction there's a great change since i got born again there's a great change since i got born again there's a great change since i got born again there's a great change since i got saved the things i used to do i do them no more the place i used to go i go there no more the things i used to say i say them no more that's a great change since i got born, when you were not born again all that makes your years stretch was money contracts money business appointments contract that was when you're not born again money can still be a blessing to you but now that you're in the kingdom of god souls winning souls heaven eternity should make your heart shake oh my god he should make your heart shake because now you have eternal consciousness if heaven does not excite you you need to check your salvation because this world is not my home i'm just passing through then lord what should i do the angels me open doors and i can't feel at home in this world anymore but we need to remember that we are sojourners in this world sir that's why one of the best moments of the funeral of queen elizabeth was when they said that strip elizabeth no more queen of all the worldly adornments and let elizabeth down she can't be queen in the grave as soon as she dies queenship is over be careful not to brag in things that would that would die and perish because those were, most people say hey what are you um yes just to let you know i'm the ceo of bam 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 i'm the md of dum 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 when you stand before christ is that how you introduce yourself introduction that has no meaning There was a rich man that came to Jesus Christ. He was like, oh yeah, but uh, I'm, I'm number two on four lists of young rich people in, in, in the world. And Jesus Christ said, go and sell everything first and come back. <laughs> was Jesus against wealth? Jesus was only saying to him, you don't understand what is important. Oh, glory to God. God is looking for people. You know, one scripture says that it says, out of Zion, God will raise up saviors. It didn't put savior friend to Jesus, it was of saviors. You need to feel it. We can you listen to me. How many of your friends are suffering depression and you are the voice that God wants you to talk to them? How many of your friends are struggling an addiction and you are the voice that God is using to needs to use to talk to them? Must they die before you stand up? Are you gonna be like the rich man? That when he died and got to hell, he told Lazarus, he told, he, told, he told Father Abraham, please, let someone go from the dead and warn my family. And the answer of Abraham then, he said his answer today, nobody is going to come from the dead and go back. He said, they have the living with them. They have you and I. And if they will not listen to us, and that's it. But what about if the saints refuse to share? What a damnation. You need to ask yourself, when was the last time I shared the gospel with someone? You need to ask yourself, how many of my friends do I know that I will see them in heaven? How many of my family friends do I know I will see them in heaven? When was the last time I shared the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ? I have Facebook that doesn't face anything. See what Isaiah said, are you ready for this? Are you ready for this? Look at him and say, Lord, send me. Look at him and say, Lord, send her. Lord, send him. I pray that God, I pray that a restlessness is provoked in your spirit until you get up and begin to do what God wants you to do. 
Isaiah chapter 6 verse 8. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Lift up your hands and thank him everyone. Just, just play high. It goes the volume for just a minute. Lift up your hands and say, Lord, send me. Say, Lord, break my heart with what breaks yours. Lord, break my heart with what breaks yours. Amen. Isaiah 12, 6 verse 8. Can we read together? Let's read together. Can we do that? Let's, let's do something different. All the men stand up. Let's read this together. All the men stand up. All the men stand up. But Charles, stand quickly, quickly, quickly. Don't stand like an old man. Yeah. All the men stand up. If you don't stand, I call you out. You're in the military zone this morning. Once you go, let's read. Also, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? Who will go for us? Then send high. That is a call. Who shall go for us? You've lived all your life for yourself. Is it not time to live for him? Can you hear the call from heaven? That who shall go for us? That some of your friends are going through divorce. How many of your friends will go through my divorce? Until God will raise you up as a pillar and says, as long as I'm here, we will do something about this. And he said, and he said, he said, well, here am I. Send me. Here am I. Send me. And I, <laughs> Asna sent some people, money sent some people, but Lord, here am I. Send me. Please have your seats. All the women stand to your feet. It's your turn. It's your turn. Who is God going to send to single mothers here? Who is God going to send to end teenage pregnancy? How many of you are from Calabar here? Calabar people, raise up your hands. Do you know all of you from Calabar here? If you have twins in your family that your brothers or sisters or your parents, you owe their life to a woman called Mary Celeste. Mary Celeste was a young lady in Britain. She moved to Nigeria when there was no electricity in Nigeria. And because of her ministry in Calabar, she single-handedly ended the killing of twins because the belief was that twins were something demonic. You must know that you live on the sacrifice of other people and that's what God is calling you to sacrifice. Many of you had a rough life, slipped around just to get money for education. How come you can't provide scotch for somebody else? We didn't say for thousands of people, just one person, just 200 keep per year. You can't do it. Do you know what it meant when you didn't have money and chief with a smelly pot belly came and enveloped you. And as he was having his own fun, he were crying. He said, what am I doing here? What am I doing here? What am I doing here? I just said the money, just the money. But now, you are out of that race. Someone else is there. Won't you help them? He said, well, I, I know that she's dating the wrong person, but I don't want to talk. Is it until she gets into trouble? If you cannot talk, send her the message. If you cannot talk, invite her to church. Because you understand I'm the watchman. Let's read women. Want to go. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's what I wanted to leave the service with. That's mine. That here I am. Send me. A lot of people, they struggle with a subject team. They think when they fix their body and add bolts and remove stomach, they'll feel better. They've done everything, but they are still broken inside. The reason why is that body sculpturing does not change inside that feeling about yourself need is someone to let them know that girl you're beautiful girl you're awesome girl you're worthy how did this also encourage them can you be that voice of god in their life can you be that voice of god in their life all their life they've had you're not useful you're just used for sex you're this you're bad you're not intelligent you're not this you're not that but can you be the voice that says you're beautifully and wonderfully made here am i send me when they have their messy breakup, we contribute on social media. I say we don't understand that these are heartbroken people trying dealing with the issues of life. And everybody just looking for someone. You know the thing? 
it's amazing because everyone is looking for someone that can be there. Well, God use you to be become that person. Because once you cannot be there, Satan is, can be there. Please have you said. Send me. Send me. I'm praying that the blessing of restlessness will rest upon you. That you'll be provoked to take actions. Glory to God. Ezekiel chapter Isaiah chapter 62 verse 1 verse 6 Isaiah chapter 62 verse 6 oh my God see what God said God says I've set watchmen upon the walls O Jerusalem that shall he said this watchman they shall never hold their peace they will say as long as people, child pregnancy will rise I will never have peace is a personal vow that until the whole of my family become born again there will be no peace he said they shall never hold their peace they, they say no matter how rich i get if this is the problem i will be restless they will never hold their peace day or night why and make mention and make mention of the lord they will not keep silence next verse please and it says this and they will give him no rest till he establish till he make jerusalem a praise of the earth they would they would give him no rest you come from a family where people don't get married easily you will give god no rest until that yoke is broken some of you always pride yourself in something ah oh. <laughs> team my mother can pray my mother can pray my mother can pray i feel bad for you you know why i feel bad for you because you are a beneficiary of your mother's prayer what will your children inherit from you because you don't pray you're a beneficiary of your mother's prayer what will your own children inherit from you so as a man you now package yourself because now you know that you can't pray you're not saying i'm looking for a prayerful woman that's why you marry fake because it takes a prayerful man to know a prayerful woman that's why you marry fake because these things are not spiritually designed. It's not about koskidi manakumbreke dile ni 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 oh skala gala oh that's not they can fake that. But when deep people see deep people, there's a way that deep calls out to deep. There's a way that deep calls out to deep. Be the kind of man when they spray money, you spray money. But if it demand prayer, you spray prayer. Emeko palataya. When it gets to dollars, you say, okay, this is it. When it gets to prayer, don't be that kind of man. Our, our, our wife prays for us. No! The man is a priest of the family. He says you're a watchman. Ask the man, be the watchman over your children. When you stand in your priesthood office, establish a musiato palike mananto kaya, establish boundaries. I say, devil, not here. Yeah. Right, when I say pray, you will start now moving like a rotor. Mm-hmm. Honey, pray. Mm-hmm. Before they even tap. You, 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 because you're already warming up in the spirit. Glory to God. You're a watchman. Why did God make you the head of the family? You're a watchman. In the industry where you're on, you're in the entertainment industry. You're a watchman. You're in consulting. You're a watchman. You're in politics. You're a watchman. Entertainment. You're a watchman. Full business. You're a watchman. He said, what do these watchmen do? They will not hold their peace. Until Jerusalem, his beauty is stored. People that will say, this thing about sex trafficking will take the next level. We will combat it. I don't have the resources, but I know that God sends me. Because sometimes when God sends you, that's all you need. No money. I met a man recently. Last year. He's from India. And he said he got so touched by the thing about sex trafficking. 
and it's a choice organization alone they brought back 5,500 girls that were sold into sex trafficking when will you begin to say beautiful things like that you think that testimony is bigger than is smaller than i bought a house in the Koyi? you are a joker you are a joker yoka joker yoka joker yoka joker you, you keep us showing us jiwagon khaki lexus khaki things that small rapture you will not see them again just one rapture the car cannot ascend just rapture the car cannot get up yet the souls you wait huh? the bible says as a trumpet sound he said the dead in christ shall rise up and we which are alive and remain shall be cut up of my shutter what a day the rapture shall be i can't wait to see my lord and savior we shall be caught up in the sky forever and ever and ever and so shall we be with our lord what a day what a day what a day no more traffic no more dollar no more inflation no more full price we are in the pure oh, yeah 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 we are in the beautiful country of zion the streets are paved with gold what a day what a day what a day keep wearing louis vuitton and beluti we'll be wearing gowns of heaven ha <laughs> yeah yeah shoes salebra kavananto sabadaye someone says how would they look i don't know but perfect size perfect size all of a sudden you see that brother that on earth did not have a leg in heaven his leg is complete because the bible says immortality shall put immortality shall put on immortality that which is not perfect shall put on perfection then it's not matter if you are single or married again because the one i was married is not my sister the one I was married is not my brother. We are all one with the Lord. What a day! What a day! What a day! No more, I'm going to Canada, I'm going to Nigeria. All of us in one city. What a day! What a day! Serving and living for Jesus what a day i hope you'll i hope i will see you there I, I didn't hear you i hope i will see you there let me ask your neighbor say i hope i will see you there because heaven does not follow church register glory to god watch man what the watch is let's read again verse six I've set thee as watchmen upon the walls of Jerusalem, which, which shall never hold their peace day or night. And they make mention of the Lord. Keep no silence. You know, I'm just jumping now. And give him no rest until he establish, until he make Jerusalem a prison. You will say, Lord, until everybody in my estate becomes born again, there will be no rest. Didn't you read about a man called John Knox? John Knox lived at the time of the Queen of England, the real, the Queen Elizabeth I. Queen Elizabeth said to John Knox, he said, I fear the prayer of John Knox more than other people. More than a thousand armies. See, if you line up a thousand British army, the prayer of John Knox is more powerful. Same John Knox will kneel down on his knees every day. He said, today, give me four souls or I die. Give me four souls. He said, if you don't give me souls, I die here. If you don't give me souls, I die here. Just imagine someone's prayer. Not shoe and bag. Souls. You will say, Father, give me the entertainment industry. Listen to me. We are not asking for it. Father, give me, deliver it to me. Let me take it for you. Glory to God. I say, Glory to God. What do watchmen do? Watchmen, so in the olden days, they will build walls and they will build walls to protect the city and they will put a watchman on top of the wall what does a watchman do number one he's in charge of that location he's in charge of that location so you need to ask yourself who have god put me in the location i'll give you some ideas your family members that the watchman there the office where you walk to all the souls in that building are the watchman the place you live all the people you live in are the watchman 
what's the responsibility of the watchman? Number one, to protect them. Because every time the watchman fails, the people suffer. Because what the watchman does is this. He sees danger coming. Then he warns everybody. That's what you're meant to do. When you walk into the office as a watchman, don't be in a hurry. Because you are waiting. Who does God want to touch today? Who does God want to invite today? Who does God want to reach today? So as you, you see the reception is looking so down. You'll be like, uh-uh, Antonia, what is wrong? And because you can tell that this is a moment. And she breaks down and starts crying. But sometimes we are too in a hurry. We pass the opportunity to reach people. Why in a hurry to? Slow down for God. What about those on your Instagram, on your social media, on your Facebook? You're the watchman. How can you come to church with nobody? You mean you don't know one sinner to bring to church? Someone doesn't want church to bring to church? Because what you want is a record full in heaven. That the Lord knows that one, two, three, four, five people, I was the one that influenced them for the sake of the gospel. When you want a sinner, how many of you got your friend to drink? Raise up your hands. Raise up your hands. By chance, raise up your hand. Yeah. You got your friends to drink. Raise up your hands. Raise, raise it up like this. Raise it up. How many of you got your friends to smoke? You can put it in. How many of you got your friends to smoke? What did you tell them? Give her the microphone. What did you tell them? Hey, what did you tell them? Give her the microphone. She got her other girlfriends to smoke. Give her the microphone. It's not me. She at least she told the truth. You are lying. Okay. Continue. How did you get that smoke? That was the old. This not in this. The new is for Holy Ghost field. What? Just try, just try. You were encouraging her. You see, what did you tell her? You said. Just try to solve your problem. Yeah. You see, that's evangelism. Evangelism. That's evangelism. That's what it is. As simple as that. And you look sad. Follow me to church. You'll be surprised what will happen. And she she resisted. Then you put some. You encouraged her. What did you say? How did you encourage her? Just a drag. Just a drag, right? Is it, this is a drag. Just the family friend that stays in the next house. You don't go to church. You'll be like, if you don't enjoy my church, I will buy all the children pizza. Say, ah ah. You are so sure. Are you not sure about what you believe? Yes. Just bring them and let God touch them. That's how you taught them how to drink tequila. I taught them how to drink uh, vodka and Hennessy and VVSOP and SSSOP and um, you know, give me, give me the names now. Mattel. Martin, Martini, hmm? Azu, Azu. Look at you. Satan used you to give people Azu, to give them Martini. Holy Ghost also using that you are resisting. It's like they say, ah, Lord, if I were you, I'll say, Father, as Satan used me, I dedicate myself. Use me more. Use me more. You used to pack. Oh my God, are, are you here? Here. You used to. Pack load of girls and guys to club you will pack them follow them up where are you now guy where are you they come they come they come they come the same thing now that you are born again you will pack that car full he said we are all going to heaven yeah. somebody says send me yeah. uh, okay you, know, you, you see you'll not be doing mr big man you're not come to church by yourself is that how you go to the club <laughs> no this is a new club Jesus is happening. Yeah. Who do you think I am? I'm a bartender. I said the drink of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Why do you think they are shouting? They are being drunk of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. You didn't know? I'm a Holy Ghost bartender. Yeah. We serve Exodus. <laughs> we serve Genesis. <laughs> we serve Spiritology. Yeah. We serve Christology. Yeah. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, somebody shout Amen. So you don't tell them come to church, you come and drink. Hey, they say, Who babes be there? What do you think? Look at them everywhere. They are there. Who guys be there? They are there. Come and drink. By the time we finish serving them spiritology. Uh,
what happened to you holy ghost touch me are you here are you here those on the side are you here uh, isn't that you have not drunk holy ghost right here because here he's so quiet yeah stand on your feet all of you stand uh-huh praise god if your neighbor is not active say my brother drink some more that's what i don't like when you come to church and behave stiff the house of god is the house of joy there should be shouting and singing and celebration everybody stand and shout everybody stand stand and shout 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 praise God please you can have your seat what happens what happens with watchmen most of the time watchmen get distracted oh someone said what do you mean look at in this bible first kings chapter 20 verse 4 let's look at it quickly what happens to watchmen they get distracted same thing when you go to a club and someone distracts you and you not tell your friend let's go home he said i'm not going again but well, we didn't come with him he said it doesn't matter i want to stay with him and i said hey, hey. see what the king of israel what he said and the king of israel answered my lord O king according to thy saying i am dying and no no that's what i'm going to verse 40 verse 40 20 40 oh glory to god see what it says as i, I let's risk it i want to go as your servant was busy here and there he was gone that's it watchman as you were busy as you wanted to want to do this do this he was gone we are expecting jesus we are ex- let me teach you how to do old school praise and worship you know they don't scream give me the old school bit we are expecting jesus we are expecting jesus we are expecting jesus we don't know when he shall come don't be tired in praying don't be tired in worship don't be tired in preaching we don't know when he shall come we are expecting jesus we are expecting jesus we are we do are you expecting Jesus expecting Jesus it's not every time bless me bless me bless me you remind yourself because this world can be very distracting you will soon think the whole world is TikTok something that did not exist 10 years ago Be careful not to brag in things that can disappear. Be careful. Brag in things of eternal value. Oh, glory to God. Why do, what happened to what? They get distracted. The second thing, they become at ease. Amos chapter 6 verse 1. Amos chapter 6 verse 1. They become at ease. The Bible says, Woe to them that are at ease in Zion. You know, when, when they were younger Christian, see what it says. Let's just want to go. Woe to them that are what? Woe means cursed. You, you used to carry speaker, carry this small, small range over you brought. Small marriage you married. I'm now a married man. I'm now a married woman. Things that have no degree in heaven. You used to come on Sunday and touch say every time you were burning for the Lord. But as life became comfortable, they made you senior manager. You know, be careful. That you don't exchange your faith for your career promotion that you don't sacrifice your faith for growth as you rise at work be more humble as you rise in money be more humble let don't let money change you you've now you are now you've grown out of evangelism hey <laughs> oh my god oh my i can't believe this wow 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 our master 
the ultimate thing he became was a soul winner but you because you are now ceo of this bank md of that bank you've grown out of evangelism nah. So what do you do as a soul winner? Number one, you protect the. How do you protect it? You, you have a consciousness that the people here, this is the, it's a sense of ownership that the people here, God has sent them to guide. So in the office, so when you go back to the office tomorrow, back to the estate today, to your house, to your family, to your school, you must change the way you think and say, this whole of you like God has given it to me. This whole of the estate God has given it to me, and I'm responsible as a watchman here. The second thing you do is that if you're a watchman, a watchman warns people when evil is about to happen. You begin to warn, talk to people. You don't, you don't threaten them. Show them love. Teach the love of God. Don't criticize them. Don't judge them. Love them. I know that there's something in you that wants to point at their sin. But that thing is fleshy. Love them. Love the sinner. Leave the sin. So I say, ha, ah, that guy is homosexual. I can kill him. God did not kill him. Where are you? Why are you talking about as if Jesus did not die for him or her? That girl, she's done 10 abortions at least. Oh, sorry, Mrs. Miss Virgin. Virgin. They always steal office money. Sorry, Mr. Mr. Clean. But the reason why you have not told is that you didn't have opportunity. Is that not true? Don't criticize them. Love them. The reason why is that eventually, when it's a change of heart, they will only run to the hands of someone that loves them, not someone that judged them and criticized them. The problem with the church is this we are fighting against so many things. Let us be known for what we stand for, not what we stand against love them love changes anyone love will make the hardened sinner become weak and melt towards you let him be like why do you love me so much you are different from me I don't even love you the way you love me and he'll be like it's the love that we receive from him that I'm sharing with you I was forgiven so I can also forgive I was redeemed so that I can also redeem people that have aided me. Pay attention to them. Don't walk behind someone that is depressed. Don't be, see, don't copy dirty things. Dirty, useless things. The song that they sing. If you have problem, call God. If you have money, call me. Those, those are not the languages of a Christian. The reason why is that their problem is our opportunity. I see Christian plates. If you have problem, call God. If you have money, call me. If you have problem, call God. If you have money, call me. Don't talk like that. You are the light of the world. Light is valid in darkness. Their problems are of opportunity. Get close to them. Sit down with them. Cry with them. The one that is pregnant, sit down with her. The one that got through a heartbreak, sit down with her. The one that there's a single mom, single father, sit down with him, sit down with her. The one that is depressed, sit down with him. Don't be like, uh huh. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah, they're married men. They will show you shaky. <laughs> it's God's judgment. Are you God? Did He inform you that He's judging them? You want to be more righteous than the Pope? Do you invite them? Then you stand in the gap for them. Prayer. The reason why is that until the Spirit of God opens our eyes, we can never see what is right or wrong. That was why for you, all the things you did when you were younger, you didn't know. It was as if, why oh, was I wasting my time? Because you were blind. You're like, I was just wasting my time. But let the Spirit of God open your eyes. How do you do that? Prayer. You pray for them that the scales will fall off. And the last thing you do, you compel them to a service. Let me tell you something. Ever look up here. If you want to get born again, if 
you want to get someone born again, one of the easiest things to do is to invite them and their children to a Sunday service. But don't invite them once. You know why? If you meet a girl you like, and you talk to her once, and she really likes you, and you don't talk to her again, will she fall for you? No. When you invite someone to church, you do it once. Get them to come five to six times. That hardens heart. Every time they come, bah, they will shake it off. But the thing has entered. Next, next step is, bah, they will shake it off. Bah, by the fifth time, you just hear, I surrender. I don't like, Because when you thought they were not changing, there was internal restructuring taking place. The Holy Ghost was working on the inside. The problem with inviting people to church that you bring them once and you expect them to change. Is that how you changed? Some of you, it was even one year because the heart was Uluma rock. You must make it a habit. So, so who should I invite to church? What about your brothers, your sisters? What about the people that you used to drink with? What about the people you used to club with? And don't just invite them. Pick them up on Sunday because they'll give an excuse. Make sure that they are home on Saturday night because if they get drunk and stay, they will not come. If the, if the, if the family is already say, okay, I'll take the children. Because when you say you take the children, the parents will be like, ah, uh-uh. let's come and follow them. All of you that are single, go and sleep in the auntie's house because I want to bring you. Take all the testimony from NLP from all the services share so all those things begin to prepare their hearts makes their hearts soft towards the things of god as i close isaiah chapter 6 verse 8 whom shall i send who will go for us here am i send me let's start up and pray and that's your prayer today here am i lord send me go ahead and pray everybody go ahead and pray here my lord lord send me send me send me to the depressed people send me to the send me to my estate oh lord I, i'm accepting the call send me send me lord 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 in my office use me to bless people my god Break my heart with what breaks yours, Heavenly Father. Go ahead and pray. Break my heart with what breaks yours. Use me to make a difference in my family. Use me to make a difference in my community. Use me to make a difference in my industry. I'm here in Canada. Use me, oh God. I'm here in Lagos. Use me, oh God. And Father, here am I send me my prayer is that lord the spirit will break our hearts with what breaks yours you will bless us with spiritual restlessness that will be restless until we find ourselves going you will inspire visions of soul winning making a difference changing lives in our hearts today even all those that are abroad within the cities you are in watching online you will inspire it in their heart i ask you in jesus name we pray amen are you blessed give the lord a big shout of praise god bless you can have your sins let me tell you what i think you should do everyone should talk about this message there's a link on youtube put the youtube link on the screen if you can put it on your start and say everybody must watch this message is this message of our church is a is a call to the whole church global church because we have heard enough about prosperity. Let's hear about heaven and soul winning. Praise God. All eyes closed, all let's bow. If you're not born again, I want to pray for you. All you have to do is to literally raise up your right hands and I will pray for you. One, two, three, go. Raise it up in Jesus' name. I want to give my heart to Christ. Thank you, my brother. God bless you. Thank you, my sister. God bless you. Raise up your right hand. God bless you. Thank you. God bless you. I'm here. I'm not born again. I know myself. I'm not born again. Anywhere you are, you don't have to stand up. You don't have to come out. Just raise up your right hand above your head. All of you are right and will you say this with me will you say this with me if you want to do this don't say it in your mind i'm doing it the right thing to do is to raise up your right hand above your head and the ushers will also give you a card i want to know that ahead of time because we want to support you in your newfound faith say with me say heavenly father thank you for showing yourself to me in a way that i really understand and appreciate i believe the message of your love and grace that you died for me 
on the third day you were raised from the death of my justification and today i receive into life into my spirit that makes me a child of god thank you for forgiveness that i've received right now and redemption for i am a new creation in christ jesus i've received the gift of righteousness in jesus mighty name we pray amen praise the lord if you raise up your hand the ushers will give you a card please take the cards and feel so i said why they give me a card we just want to encourage you your newfound faith that's all we want to do we don't want to disturb you or bark you just to encourage you hallelujah